Sebastian Miller Martinez for MMA News here with Swedish bantamweight Pani Kianzad, who faces Jessica Rose Clark in a rematch at UFC Moscow in November. So you mentioned it earlier that uh, this was uh, the fight that was offered you. It was a rematch. Uh, you didn't necessarily have to ask for it, but you said that you were very interested in this rematch. Why is that? Uh, I just thought our last fight was really good. Um, I mean, I, I just really want to top that. I really want to make this fight even better. And what do you do to make a fight even better? Because like you said, there was a lot of stuff that happened, and one might say that it's, it'll be hard to top that in terms of the uh, unique techniques that were used. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we had such a good fight, it's really hard to top that, but I think like the past five years we've both grown, we both fought different styles, and I've been really putting in work the last uh, since my last fight in UFC in Vegas um, with my strength conditioning, and I think um, I'm bringing a lot of power to the table this time. All right, so this will be more of a Terminator 2 Empire Strikes Back kind of sequel that elevates the first one. I haven't seen that movie. I don't even know. You haven't seen Terminator 2? No. I just saw one, I think. I don't even know. <laughs> okay, so Penny is not an action movie fan, I guess. <laughs> but you are a fan of the UFC. Yeah. And, and you've seen uh, Jessica Rose Clark compete in the UFC. How do you feel about her latest performances? Uh, I mean, I think they're both fine. She's 2-1 in the UFC. Um, I think she did the best in her last fight against I. Um, but still, I, um, I'm really excited to see her back at 135. I think it was, it was just like a bad decision going to 125. If you have to cut so much that everything, uh, like every, all of your training you're doing is just to cut weight. That's hard. Everything you're thinking about is cutting weight, you're cutting weight instead of like training and feeling good and eating well. Um, so I'm really excited to welcome her back. All right. And for the most part, you've been a fighter who's been very respectful, who doesn't necessarily cross the line in terms of trash talk, <laughs> or I guess you don't feel the same way? I'm all, I never trash talk. <laughs> of course not. But we're seeing a bit of a trend in the UFC that people are perhaps crossing certain lines. For example, Colby Covington comes to mind for a lot of people recently. And people are saying that, you know, there's trash talk and there's things that cross the line where you risk actual violent confrontations in the gym and things like that. Uh, how do you feel about this trend that perhaps, uh, I, I guess one could say that maybe McGregor started it and then uh, Covington is continuing it on? Like, how do you feel about the level of trash talk and, and media in the UFC right now? Uh, I just think, I thought he wouldn't like take it that far. I thought he was just joking in the beginning and it, it was fun. You know, people were laughing. Oh, you love Trump. Oh, that's funny. Okay. You're around strippers. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Where did you get those from? <laughs> you know, and I thought it was a joke first, but now it's, it feels real. And I think him and Masvidal used to be really good friends and then they broke off and I just, it's, it's got too far. It's too much now. <laughs> All right. Uh, one thing on the other end of the spectrum that the fans seem very happy about is the fact that the UFC is listening to the fans a lot more and they booked the Jorge Masvidal Nate Diaz for the BMF title. Uh, this is a thing that a lot of fans are definitely looking forward to and you know, you're also a fan of a sport, not just a fighter. If they were to do a BMF female title in the UFC, who would you say is most deserving to fight for that title right now? Oh, well, of course Nunes. You have to have somebody against Nunes. But right now, I don't know who, who's the other, you know. Shevchenko fighter. trilogy, maybe? Uh, yeah, maybe. But I, I thought that Nunes won those two fights clear. I don't see Even the second one? Even the second one. I don't think there was no hesitation that she didn't win. I just think people like him at, like Valentina so much because she's so blonde and cute. <laughs> so I didn't want her to win. I just think that Amanda is just, she's GOAT right now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> right now <laughs> yeah so okay so you can't really think of like a good bmf no yet. yet i just need a, a few more fights and then i can and then you'll throw your hat <laughs> your name in the hat and i will offer yeah <laughs> no, but. and so uh, this will be your uh, your return to the uc now when uh, when you take on clark and what does the rest of your timetable look like do you know do you think that you want to return early next year do you want to stay active do you maybe want to uh, work on some skills until then or you know, what's your forecast forecast for the next coming months? Uh, call me crazy, but I think if I'm not injured in November I would like to fight one more time before the year ends. Really? Yeah. So like maybe the T-Mobile arena or Singapore? Yeah, maybe Singapore or something. I thought it would be cute. Korea maybe? Maybe. I've never been there. Uh, yeah, so everything is depending on this fight, but I'm 100% focused on this fight now. right now. I'm going in, you know, 
if I die, I die, you know, <laughs> kind of mentality. Okay. Yeah, I'm leaving it all on the table. And you're one of the, I guess there's a couple of them out there, but you're one of the Scandinavia's most known uh, MMA couples. Uh, your, your boyfriend, Ilaz, is also a fighter who is looking to make the step to professional soon. Uh, what's it like when you're living with and also training alongside your partner? Is it, do, do those lines sometimes cross from sparring partner to uh, relationship partner? Um, I think me and Ilaz are doing it really well, actually. Um, he is one of my main sparring partners. And, you know, he helps me a lot with my training, more than people know, actually. He helps me, like, basically every day. <laughs> but uh, usually when we train, we do it, like, when, um, when, when I get trained by him, we train alone. Um, so we can work on game like uh, um, game plan details and a lot of technical stuff because usually I have my classes with my trainers one one to two hours but with Elas when I work we can work, we can talk like for hours and work like different drills and different positions and everything so um, when we spar he's not you know um, I don't feel like he punches me with a boyfriend you know, power is, it, it's not just like this, he, he fucking goes for it. And I think that's how I got better. Because if, if I had a boyfriend that was like, you know, touch me like this and like, oh, I don't want to injure you. I'm like, oh, no. So, you want some tough love. <laughs> tough love. But then I give it back as well. <laughs> of course I I'm do. sure you do. <laughs> I mean, when he fights and when I get him ready for a fight, uh, uh, I spar a lot with him. And on fight day too, when we warm up, we spar together and everything. So he can feel like he's comfortable. But he does a lot, and I just um, I wish more people could like recognize that he's doing so much. <laughs> so shout out to Ilas back home. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've been doing um, we we roll a lot together, we do a lot of sparring, and um, I just think he's he's a big key in my training and my mindset as well. And you've had a pretty passionate fan base from around the world. Obviously, your fans in Iran are, are just constantly blowing up Instagram whenever you post anything. Whenever somebody is tagged with me, they get plus 10 Iranians. <laughs> plus 10 Iranians. Yeah, there was one Iranian who started actually typing to me, yeah, slid yeah. into my DMs. Even Elas had to go in there and like, dude, dude. <laughs> Marriage proposal? Uh, dude. <laughs> He's like, Penny, my love. Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> But so yeah, uh, you got so many passionate fans, and you've made a lot of new ones after Tough as well. What's your message for the fans who are looking forward to and anticipating your rematch with Clark? Um, I think actually, I think the fans are like super excited because they think the whole uh, the whole fight is gonna be butt bombs. I, I I'm pretty sure you're gonna be disappointed. <laughs> so just set this mind, this nasty mind aside, and just think good fight, good fight. I'm, Thank you so much for supporting me all over the world, not only Sweden, but states, Iran, all over. All right, well, very happy. Think more about the fights and less about butts, and you will definitely not be disappointed. <laughs> so this is Pastor Vendor Martinez here for Panic Yansad, who rematches Jessica Rose Clark at UFC Moscow in November. Thank you very much.